Like most recent DJI models, the Mini 4 Pro has a hyperlapse functionality with four modes, but one of them is much more powerful and flexible than the others. Waypoint. It is the one I use almost every time. I have very recently made a video about hyperlapses with the Mini 4 Pro. However, Waypoint mode deserves a detailed video of its own. Waypoint operates differently compared to the other hyperlapse modes. It works by creating a mission based on two or more points. After choosing hyperlapse in the photo video menu, another menu appears to the left with the four hyperlapse modes. We choose the one at the bottom, Waypoint. A small window prompts us to set Waypoint. We can add as many points as desired. For videography, in most cases, we only need a few points. Often, two points will be enough, unless we want to follow the path of a river or a road, in which case, more points will be needed. Later on in this video, I will show the same scene taken with two and with four points. To set the first one, I fly to the desired location and orient the camera to frame the target. Open the window by tapping on the small arrow to the right and tap on the first icon to the left. The first point is set. The position of the aircraft, its elevation and the camera orientation are stored in memory. We can move to the position for the second point, orient the camera, tap on the next icon to set the second point, and so on. In this video I will analyze mainly the settings specific to waypoint mode, but I suggest watching my video about hyperlapses with the Mini 4 Pro for more details about other useful settings. I will add a link at the end of this video. After entering all the points needed, we tap on the three dots at the right of the window for more settings. The first one to the left is Sequence, with two options. In normal, the photo shooting will start from the first point. If we tap on it, it will turn into Reverse, where the shooting will start from the last point. This can save battery time in certain situations. I suggest always choosing the option that ends the move closer to the home point, as we will often be short of battery at the end of the shooting and need to land as soon as possible. Interval sets the time in seconds between each photo. Assuming that we want a short movie of about 12 seconds, with the Mini 4 Pro we can choose intervals of 2, 3 or 4 seconds. The interval affects the speeds of the moving elements within the scene. As you can see from these examples, the longer the interval, the faster the car moves. It also affects the time needed to take a certain amount of photos. With drones in general I aim for 300 photos, for a hyperlapse of about 12 and a half seconds. With an interval of 3 seconds, it will take 15 minutes to take 300 shots. This is compatible with the battery life of the Mini 4 Pro, which is about 25 minutes. Assuming that we don't waste too much time setting up and returning home. With an interval of 2 seconds we can take 450 photos in 15 minutes, for a longer movie of almost 19 seconds. This is often useful, but there is a caveat. At this interval, the shortest value available for shutter speed is one fourth of a second, as the camera needs some time to buffer each shot. As we will see later, a good shutter speed value is one second. At one fourth of a second, the movement is not perfectly smooth, but still acceptable. An interval of 2 or 3 seconds works well when the moving elements in the scene are people walking, cars or other vehicles. When the movement is mostly in the clouds, an interval of 4 seconds is preferable. However, at this interval in 15 minutes we can only take 225 photos. Therefore, we must compromise on the length of the hyperlapse, which will be a bit more than 9 seconds. We can even choose a 5 second interval for a more dramatic cloud movement, 
but the movie will be shorter at about 8.5 seconds. You may have noticed that unlike the other modes, Waypoint has no setting for speed. In this mode, the pace of the flight is automatically adjusted based on the distance traveled and the length of the short movie. The longer the distance, the faster the aircraft will fly. The most important variable to master for epic hyperlapses is shutter speed value to achieve the correct amount of motion blur. I have described in depth the importance of motion blur in many videos. If you are serious about time lapses and hyperlapses, I suggest watching my specific video by clicking on the link on the screen. I will quickly show you some clips made at different shutter speed values to show how important motion blur is. This one was taken without ND filter at a very fast shutter speed of 1 over 3600 of a second. This is a mistake that many users make when they start. The movement of the cars is extremely jumpy, nowhere near what we would see in real life, simply painful to watch, a disaster. The next one I put an ND filter, but it is not strong enough for the light conditions. The shutter speed value is 1 20th of a second. The result is marginally better, but still unusable. The movement is way too jumpy. For this one, I choose an interval of 2 seconds for a longer short movie. I have the correct ND filter, but with this interval, the slowest shutter speed available is 1 4th of a second. In the resulting clip, we start to see a bit of motion blur. The effect is not exactly what I aim for, but it can be considered acceptable. We are trading off some motion blur for some extra length in the hyperlapse. In this one, I set the interval of 3 seconds, and I put an ND filter of the correct value to use a shutter speed of 1 second. To simplify, we can consider 1 second as the most suitable shutter speed value for drone hyperlapses. As you can see, the movement is now very smooth and the hyperlapse looks much better. A set of ND filter is crucial to apply a specific shutter speed value in different light conditions. I have a set of three filters made by DJI with ND values of 16, 64 and 256. The quality is excellent and they perform very well for video, but hyperlapses can only be taken in the last hour before sunset or later. If you are serious about this technique, I suggest adding one strong filter for brighter light conditions. You will find the link to the ND filter I use in the description of this video. Let's see a couple of examples of hyperlapse made on the same scene, but with different number of points. For the first one, I will only use two points. I want to start to the right of the main square of this small village, looking down from maximum altitude. For the second point, I move backward to the left and lower the altitude while slightly lifting the gimbal to maintain the camera on the same square. After setting the two points, I choose an interval of 3 seconds and a length of 12 seconds for the short movie. At this interval, I can set the shutter speed to 1 second for optimal motion blur. This is the result. We are just a few minutes before sunset, facing the sun. I kept the camera towards the ground to avoid overexposure. The aircraft movement is very smooth, as always when using just two points. The motion blur in the car is, in my opinion, excellent. The second one was taken a few minutes later. I start from the same point then move to the left until the camera is parallel to the main road, and I set the second point. I move backward slightly descending and insert the third point. 
Then I moved backward and to the left while descending and I set the fourth and final point. The camera aims constantly at the square of the little village. When using more than two points there is a risk of abrupt changes of direction, but in this case it worked quite well. The quality of the auto-generated short movie has improved enormously compared to previous DJI models. The clip doesn't need any stabilization. It is also possible to assemble and edit the individual raw photos using a photo editor for better results, but I'm happy with the auto-generated short movie. A very powerful functionality of Waypoint Mode is the ability to store each mission in memory. By tapping on the small icon at the top left of the window, we access all the hyperlapses recently made, with the most recent on top. It is then possible to retrieve it to shoot the same hyperlapse in different light conditions or in other seasons. It is also useful to experiment with different settings. Click on this link to watch my video about hyperlapses with the Mini 4 Pro and don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.